So we will continue with benign mimickers or differential diagnosis. And this is one of the problems with prostate pathology, that we have so many benign mimickers. These paintings may resemble Matisse or Dufy, but as a matter of fact, they are two Swedish painters. They used to be uh, students of Matisse, which explains the similarity. So as I said, there is a very long list of differential diagnoses, and this is one of the problems with prostate pathology. Мы продолжим разговор о о состояниях, которые доброкачественной мимикрии рака предстательной железы. Поговорим о семенных пузырьках, о анатомической структуре семенных пузырьков, о анатомической структуре куперовых желез, параганглии, о воспалительных заболеваниях, таких как хронический простатит, о метаплазии, гиперплазии, о атрофии и о доброкачественной гиперплазии. Now, first we will speak about anatomical structures around the prostate. The seminal, seminal vesicle is located up here. And sometimes when you try to take a needle biopsy from the base of the prostate, it will go into the seminal vesicle. It will be uh, disrupted here. So what you end up with is a fragment that looks like this, where you have mucosa here and a thick muscle wall here. Uh -huh. Табулярно на предыдущих слайдах вы видели табулярные железы, которые сгруппированы вокруг просвета. Также на следующем слайде было показано то, что выделена толстая мышечная стенка. Также это возможно сделать при выполнении прицельной биопсии основания предстательной железы. Также можно выполнить прицельную биопсию семенных пузырьков. The problem is that you have small glands that have nuclear atypia and also thick secretions. And this resembles prostate cancer. The nuclear atypia can be very, very pronounced. So this is sometimes misdiagnosed as prostate cancer. На слайде, на предыдущем слайде была представлена гистологическая картина, где располагались сдавленные, естественные, ну, ряд, близко расположенные друг к другу, переполненные железы. Их секрет подобно жевательной резинке, то есть очень вязкие. But you never have this very pronounced nuclear atypia in prostate cancer. This is degenerative. And you also have some yellow pigment here, which is typical for, for seminal vesicle. На данном слайде представлена гистологическая картина, где мы видим с вами гигантские и нормальные ядра, также гиперхромные ядра, имеющие, ну, включающие пятна хроматина. Также можно визуализировать желтый пигмент липофусцина. Также видим двухрядный эпителий. In the other end of the prostate, you have the Cowper glands. They are located in the pelvic floor, so you sometimes see, see them together with striated muscle cells. This is an unusual finding, and it's a much, much less of a problem than seminal vesicle, which is commonly seen. Бульбоуретральные железы или железы Купера округлые железы, богатые муцинозной цитоплазмой. Также на гистологической картине видно, что имеются поперечно-полосатые поперечно мышечные клетки. И... The glands are mucinous and they are filled with mucin, so the lumen is almost obliterated. And this is never seen in prostate cancer. Here's another example of Cowper's glands with mucin, mucinous epithelium and obliterated lumina, never seen in prostate cancer. Okay. Mm. Um. So, okay. I think we can go on to, to this one. Uh, if you are not certain about the diagnosis, you can do immunohistochemistry. This is a smooth act muscle actin stain, which is positive in muscle cells here, and also in myoepithelial cells around these glands. This is not seen in the prostate, only in Cowper glands. 
миопульбуратральной железы, окружены на гистологической картине, можно увидеть, что окружены миопителиальными клетками, также гладкомышечными волокнами. And then we have mucinous metaplasia, which is seen within the prostate, and this moves us to, to the list of mimickers from within the prostate. And here we also have mucinous epithelium, but with goblet cells. I've never seen a case that has been mistaken for prostate cancer, so this is not a problem either. Муцинозная гиперплазия может иметь сходство с бульбовуратральными железами, которые располагаются внутри предстательной железы. Малые, округлые формы железы, насыщенные муцинозной цитоплазмой и бокаловидными клетками. In the interest of time, I will skip a couple of cases here and move on to granulomatous prostatitis, which um, may produce a, a hard nodular prostate at palpation, so you think it is cancer, but this is benign. These are multinucleated giant cells. Um, this is often idiopathic, probably because some glands have become disrupted and secretions have caused this reaction. Гранулематозный простатит зачастую является идиопатическим. При выполнении пальцевого ректального исследования вы можете пропальпировать твердые узлы тугоэластической консистенции. На гистологическом, при гистологическом исследовании можно получить заключение, которое будет напоминать высокодифференцированный рак. We will skip squamous metaplasia as well and move on to basal cell hyperplasia, which is a reaction that may occur in BPH, uh, sometimes because there is inflammation or prostatic infarction. You have small, dark, round glands. And the reason why the glands are dark is that you have a proliferation of basal cells. Um, they are piled up on top of each other. Sometimes they are just conspicuous. Sometimes you have a little hat like this, a cap, or sometimes the gland is almost uh, obliterated like this, so you cannot see the lumen, or you have a small lumen. This looks a little bit like a hedgehog that has been rolled up like this. So you have a lumen here, and then you have the, the basal cells that are a, a little bit palisaded, but not perfectly palisaded. Гистологическая картина базально-клеточной гиперплазии, представлена слоем базальных клеток, слой неровный, имеет несколько слоев. Базальные клетки округлой формы и могут иметь небольшие ядра. Выглядят, выглядят они как темные при низкой мощности, ну, при, низкой, при низком увеличении из-за скудной цитоплазмы. Также представлена Точнее, но эти железы напоминают как, ну, как сравнение с животным, ну, как маленькие ежи. The glands are, are very round and surrounded by a concentric stroma. You have, similar to the hedgehog, you have the feeling that they are not dangerous, they are not moving around, they are just lying there. I can move to the next one. Um, sometimes it, it may be a little bit more difficult, you may have form glands, or you may have glands with, with some mucin, but these are still basal cells. Морфологические варианты базально-клеточной гиперплазии могут вызывать диагностические трудности при исследовании. На данном слайде представлены решетчатые железы внутри просвета, который располагается муцином. Clear cell cribriform hyperplasia uh, is typically seen uh, at the base of the prostate, in the upper part of the prostate. There is usually no inflammation, so it's not a reaction to, to injury, it's just a morphological variant. This may look like high-grade pin or cribriform cancer. However, when you look closer at these glands, The cytoplasm is pale and there is no nuclear atypia and you have a distinct basal cell layer here. Решетчатая клеточная гиперплазия на 
можно увидеть еще четыре железы со световой цитоплазмой, однако это нельзя ну, считать за атипию. Также можно получить дифференци... ну, дифференциально... должна проводиться дифференциальная диагностика, учитывается ну, ПИН и необходимо исключать решетчатый рак. So here is yet, yet another painting by Eugene Jansson with one of those blue city scapes. Well, uh, the probably worst problem in, in prostate pathology is uh, atrophy, which is misinterpreted as prostate cancer over and over again. And the reason is that these are small glands and they look dark because the nuclei are dark and there is very scant cytoplasm. However, the nuclei are very, very small and there is really no atypia. Гистологическая картина атрофии представлена небольшими темно окрашенными железами, а также имеются очень маленькие ядра. Можно, не, ну, это может быть признаками для использоваться как признаки дифференциальной диагностики рака. Особенно склеротическая трофия, которая на данной картинке резко выражена в фиброзной строме. It can be rather challenging to diagnose atrophy when you have a stromal reaction like this with some cro often some chronic inflammation and some desmoplasia. The, these glands get squeezed, so they, they look very sharp. They may look dissecting, uh, e even more so than, than, than a small prostate cancer. But again, the cells here are very small. The nuclei are very small. Uh, then we have the really difficult type of atrophy, and that's the partial atrophy. This is probably the most common lesion that my colleagues have problems with. Partial atrophy typically has a low cuboidal epithelium, and these are pale staining glands. Now, uh, this looks different from simple atrophy because there is no chronic inflammation and the glands look very pale and uh, you, you may see that the nuclei here are very very pale they almost seem to fade away uh, they seem to the nuclei almost disappear very very pale gray частичная атрофия небольшие на гистологической картине в предыдущем слайде было представлено небольшие легко окрашенные железы с волнообразным контуром и кубовидной цитоплазмой ядра часто доходят до опекальной границы часто можно обнаружить атрофию прилежащих желез также на данном слайде, который вы видите, представлены бледно слабо окрашенные ядра, которые, как уже было сказано, часто доходят до опекальной границы. The problem with partial atrophy is that sometimes you have some small glands lying outside here, almost like single cells, and this can easily be misinterpreted as cancer. They can be negative for basal cell stains. But the clue to the diagnosis is to compare with these glands over here and, and over here, which is obviously benign. You have the same color of the cytoplasm and you have the same sort of nuclei and, and all of them are really the same. And then, then we have post-atrophic hyperplasia, which is another variant of atrophy where we have a chronic inflammation in the background, we often have a dilated duct, and then we have a proliferation of small glands around this dilated duct. And especially on needle biopsies, this can be problematic, where we have a dilated gland here, another one here, and then we have a group of small glands here with chronic inflammation. And this is often misinterpreted as cancer. Гиперплазия предстательной железы. Предыдущий слайд была представлена группа небольших желез с кубическим эпителием. 
Также лобулярное располож... часто располагается лобулярно вокруг ну, так называемого питающего протока, то есть центрального, центрального протока. And here is another example. However, you still have this lobular organization. You have one group here, you have another group here, you have another group here, and so on. And it is also very helpful that you typically have a um, uh, stroma that looks almost degenerated. Uh, it, it's almost like sun-damaged skin or amyloidosis or something like that. Um, and you never see this stromal reaction in uh, cancer. Лобулярная структура э, полезна, ну, данный признак используется как ну, предупреждающий нас о том, что, возможно, э, необходимо э, исключать рак предстательной железы. Также э, на, картине, на кар гистологической картине видны мелкие ядра, э, похожие на при при прилегающие э, рядом атрофические ядра. Также визуализируется дегенерация или ну, склерозирование стромы. Oh, here is another Swedish painter, a cubist painter. Um, this looks very crowded, very jumbled, uh, overlapping, disorganized, similar to, to benign proliferations in the prostate. And here is another picture by him. I actually have this one on the wall at home. This is a drawing, a pen drawing. Uh, it's quite funny. It says patent. It's an invention, a machine. I don't know what it is, what it makes. Maybe it's a, a robotic immunostainer or something. Um, now, um, benign proliferations, that's a group of lesions where you have small glands with almost no nuclear atypia. So the architecture is atypical, not the cellular features. Uh, and the perhaps most difficult of these lesions is adenosis, or atypical adenomatous hyperplasia, which consists of small, tightly clustered, often pale staining small glands. Видно распространяющиеся, плотно прилегающие друг к другу уплотненные железы небольших размеров представляющий собой ограниченное узловое образование, являющееся патологическим изменением. As you can see, it's rounded, but it's not perfectly well circumscribed. You have some glands spilling out here in the stroma, and, and you can understand that people think this is cancer. Светло окрашенная цитоплазма. Нуклеар, при этом нуклеарной типи не видно, или она минимальна. Yeah. You, you have very little nuclear atypia here. Uh, they, are, they can be slightly enlarged, but not much of nuclear atypia. And it's often a light staining epithelium. So it's more that the, the glands are small and crowded. And <clears throat> when you look at a lesion like this, you have a mixture between large, obviously benign glands and smaller, tightly packed glands. And especially when you, when you go to one end of, of the lesion, you have very, very small glands, often spilling out in the stroma. So it may seem as if they dissect into the stroma. But notice again that the color of these cells is the same as of, of the large, obviously benign glands that have soft folded epithelium. Мы видели с вами узловую пролиферацию малых прилегающих, близко располагающих, уплотненных малых желез, округлые, но плохо очерченные, очень насыщенные, нужно отметить, что очень насыщенные железы, их очень много, которые прилежат плотно друг к другу. И может показаться, может даже показаться, что имеется, есть признаки инфильтрации стромы. Now, immunohistochemistry can be used to sort this up, and you should be aware that you often have a patchy distribution with gaps 
of basal cells. So there may be some glands that have a gap and some glands may be entirely negative, but they look the same as those that have a basal cell layer. And this is very typical for this lesion. Um, Sclerosing adenosis is usually not a problem, so I, I'll skip it because of uh, for, for, for reasons of time. This is a Swedish cartoonist who describes the, the Scandinavian way of drinking alcohol, and I think it is somewhat similar to the Russian way of, of drinking the vodka here. It all ends well down here. And then finally, we have verimontanum gland hyperplasia, which is, as you can hear, a proliferation which is located in the verumontanum area close to the urethra and um, this resembles adenosis but the difference is that you have these uh, brown orange brown uh, corpora amylacea often with calcifications uh, numerous small corpora amylacea within the glands um, almost rust colored uh, and, and this is usually not mistaken for cancer so th this is not a big problem плотно располагающие плотно расположенные железы небольших размеров близко располагаются к уретре большое количество часто можно обнаружить кальцификаты now when we have gone through the list of benign mimickers uh, and concluded that what we see is actually a benign mimicker, it is often not even necessary to mention it in the pathology report because the patient does not need to be treated for it. They are harmless. Uh, you might sometimes mention within the text of the report that you have, a, a, for example, an adenosis just so the next pathologist can understand that you have seen it and you think this is an adenosis. But please tell the urologist that this is a benign lesion, nothing that needs to be treated. And in the bottom line diagnosis, we, we always write benign prostate biopsies in those cases. Don't, don't make a diagnosis of adenosis, for example, because it will just be confusing for, for the urologist. Представлено описание игольчатой биопсии, точечная игольчатая биопсия, длина столбиков от 4, 4, 17, ну, представлена длина столбиков в миллиметрах, ткань простаты без атипии, диагноз доброкачественная биопсия предстательной железы. So, how do we avoid disasters in the prostate? First of all, take your time read the, reading the biopsies. As I said uh, before the coffee break, the 10x magnification is really good. Be aware of the benign mimickers. Think, uh, could, could this be a benign mimicker? Do immunohistochemistry if you are uh, uncertain, but interpret it with caution. And then if you are not certain about a diagnosis of cancer, call suspicious or a tip of uncertain significance. But do not overuse this, because if you di start diagnosing like 15-20% of your cases, like uh, a typical of uncertain significance, you will cause a, a big problem for the clinicians, because they need to take more biopsies over and over and over again. So that, that's a problem for them. So, so just use it when, when you are actually really uncertain, maybe in less than 5% of the cases. Биопсия должна во время просмотра биоптатов необходимо использовать десятикратное увеличение, помнить о доброкачественности процесса, когда неопределенные, но когда есть неопределенности, помнить о том, что ну, нужно интерпретировать результаты с осторожностью и диагностировать. Если возникают трудности при диагностике, диагностировать атипию или подозрительные признаки для рака предстательной железы в случае сомнений. Но не нужно злоупотреблять данным диагнозом. 
Uh, this picture is actually a, a real picture. It hasn't been photoshopped. This was a train accident in, in France, in, uh, in Paris, in, uh, in 1896. I have lived in France a couple of years. Um, and um, I have to say, what happened here was that the, the uh, train driver was late. He tried to catch up with the timetable. And I, I must say that this is a, not a very French behavior. They, they, they are notoriously late. But this train driver, he wanted to be in ti on time, so he, he crashed through the railway station. He couldn't stop in time and drove down here. No one got killed in the train, but there was a lady sitting down here uh, selling flowers. Who, she, she was sitting on a, on a chair knitting, and she was hit in her, in her head by, by a, a brick stone that, that fell down. So that, that's the tra horrible train accident in, in, at Gare Montparnasse in Paris in 1896. Uh, um, you, don't, you don't need to explain that to them. They can look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> so, f f uh, finally, um, we, we have already... Oh, sorry. We have already talked about this. No, finally, th this one um, is uh, m my last... or w one of my last pictures of Eugene Jansson. Uh, this is a winter picture, and you can tell, and I, I think you are familiar with this, when, when it's very cold, when it's very cold outside, and the smoke goes right up, and, and the sun stands very low, so, so, so the, the, sun, the sun just barely rises above the horizon in January, and it's very, very cold. And, and the sunlight goes along the horizon like this. It's a sort of ice-cold light. I think it is quite fascinating how artists can catch the, the sort of light, the sort of weather. You can understand what sort of weather it is when you look at a picture like this. I'm quite sure you have the same in, in, in Russia. And that was all about um, uh, mimickers. Should we move on to uh, Gleason grading immediately and then we can have uh, questions afterwards?